Everybody hear me? Oh, now you can. Um, wow, big crowd, uh, standing room only. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our session, uh, enabling real-world interoperability, interoperable hybrid cloud use cases using uh, OpenStax uh, federated identity capabilities. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, just go quickly through the agenda. I'll introduce the presenters. Uh, I'll talk about the IBM Cloud ecosystem. We'll talk about some hybrid cloud use cases. We'll then talk about uh, our, our OpenStack-based product, which is uh, for on-prem IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Uh, then we'll start getting into heavy details. Uh, overview of Keystone, the identity uh, component of uh, OpenStack. And then we'll cover some federation and uh, get into Keystone and federated identity and uh, future work. So about the presenters, um, I'm IBM's Distinguished Engineer for OpenStack. I lead, uh, my name is Brad Topol. I lead all of uh, IBM's upstream contributions to OpenStack. I have cross IBM responsibility for what we're going to contribute to OpenStack. And I'm also uh, a core contributor in Keystone Specs, Heat Translator, and PyCAD F. Um, on my right here is Steve Martinelli. Say hi. hi. Um, Steve is a multi-core and OpenStack, Keystone Core, OpenStack Client Core, Oslo Policy Core. He, uh, Steve has been one of the leading uh, contributors to uh, Keystone and its federation capabilities and its Keystone to Keystone uh, federation capabilities. Did a lot of the SAML work, did a lot of the OpenID Connect wor work. Uh, and on my left, I have Brant Knudsen. Knudsen? <laughs> I never get that right. Um, Brant is also a Keystone Core, and uh, Brant, uh, Oslo Policy Core. Um, Brant is also on the product side, uh, working on uh, with lots of customers on uh, Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Um, and, and just to give you some background on sort of IBM's approach, when you look at what we're doing in the cloud space, um, we're essentially building on open technologies at all layers. So believe it or not, um, obviously, you know, we have lots of folks that contribute to OpenStack, but you may not know we have lots of folks contributing at the other layers as well. We have lots of folks contributing to Cloud Foundry, uh, Docker, Node, um, CouchDB, um, and even at the higher software as a service layers, um, we have uh, the, the co-chair for HTML5. You know, why would IBM have the co-chair of, of HTML5 and have folks at the W3C? We don't own a browser. Well, we're typically uh, the adults in the room where we're trying to work across the other folks with browsers to make sure we're delivering the capabilities and the open technologies and open standards that our customers need. So we do actually have folks plugged in at all these different layers, um, you know, at our core. It's, it's critical to us to, to be uh, based on open technologies. So it's, it's a great strategy. Um, and then if we map this to the IBM Cloud ecosystem, um, we've got a lot of stuff at all the layers that we, we turn into product, um, again, based on these open technologies. And if we look at the lower layer here at infrastructure as a service, uh, we've got, uh, you know, for on-prem offerings, we've got an IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Um, we also have um, dedicated hosting-based OpenStack. So, you know, you can get your, IBM will run it for you and you don't have to worry about it and it's private. Uh, and we have in beta, we also have now a, a public in beta. Uh, I believe all of that was announced this morning. Um, if I got that wrong, I guess I'm in big trouble, but I know it was announced this morning. Uh, at the platform of the service layer based on Cloud Foundry, we have Bluemix. And so, you know, when you go to that next layer, when you have your developers and they want to have it real easy to get their environments up and running and to, to do what their small part of what they want to do and the database is there and the uh, app server is there and then everything is ready to scale on the cloud. Um, that's what we do with Bluemix. I highly encourage you to go check it out. Uh, lots of uh, free trials to, to go see what's available there. And then as we get at the higher layers, uh, software as a service and, and up, uh, then you see the other parts of IBM with uh, a lot of analytics, Watson Analytics, a lot of security. We do a lot in commerce and healthcare. So that's sort of the overall ecosystem. Um, real thing we want to talk to you about today is hybrid cloud 
and interoperable hybrid cloud based on open standards, based on, frankly, a lot of the OpenStack uh, technology and Keystone. Um, and I'm not going to cover a lot of details here, but the, the, the interesting thing about the, the hybrid cloud use cases are pretty straightforward. There's a lot of folks uh, who want to start on-prem, and based on the need, they want to then burst out, right? So you could burst to another cloud. Maybe you've got two different on-prem clouds. Maybe you want to burst up right, to, to a dedicated hosted cloud, what have you. So those are typically the key use cases for hybrid cloud. And when we're going to do hybrid cloud, you know, so we got a couple of them listed here, workload portability, spillover. Um, but, you know, the things we want to worry about, obviously security, control, visibility. There's a lot of folks who want to have, you know, one of the things we worry about at IBM is worrying about uh, visibility and where things run. If you have certain things that have to stay in a certain country, because of regulatory concerns, you know, we're going to have the ability so that those things stay in those in those countries, and then we can then burst up when we can and, and get the the benefits of the the extra cycles. Um, now at this point, this is going to be real easy for me because I just get to do the intros. We're going to hand over to Brant, who is going to talk to us about Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Thank you, Brett. Uh, so our Cloud Manager with OpenStack is one of the products that's in the IBM. Uh, family here. This is our single tenant uh, on-premises cloud offering. You can, uh, you know, it includes all of the IBM or all of the uh, OpenStack uh, services, and uh, you can download it from our website uh, as a demo and uh, install it and see how it works. Um, provides all the infrastructure as a service. Uh, it supports uh, several platforms. Uh, you know, Power and our System Z and our x86. Um, uh, it includes uh, some features that make it uh, pretty easy to set it up as a starter cloud. Um, we provide um, uh, the Chef uh, deployment, uh, so you use a Chef for deployment. Uh, got the resource utilization. Um, uh, the, the, there's a self-service um, interface. Uh, so on top of the uh, OpenStack, we also provide other uh, user interfaces. One of them is the self-service user interface that uh, you know some deployments need to have uh, uh, a way for customers to request a uh, you know compute resources and then to have them also. Uh, be uh, approved by their administrator. And uh, it uh, is RefStack compliant. So it's a pretty basic, uh, you know, OpenStack, and there's other products that uh, build on top of this. Uh, provides a single point of management. Uh, you know, this is pretty similar to the previous slide here. It's got the metering and billing. Uh, and we'll be demoing some of the federation capabilities here. Uh, all of these demos were built uh, using that cloud manager with OpenStack. Uh, uh, on this one, we have several of the features. Um, easy to deploy uh, using the Chef cookbooks. It's pretty easy to set up a an all-in-one system, or you can also set up a uh, you know a, a single node and multiple computes, and then you, you can also set up HA. We've implemented that in our in the uh, current release. Uh, and on top of that, we also provide a uh, user interface that allows you to pretty easily uh, fill in the uh, build your uh, build your deployment, um, add new new computes, and and uh, move your services around. Uh, so it's chef-based, uh, we got the self-service portal. Uh, and I'll go on to the next one here. Uh, so, uh, of course, along with the Cloud Manager with OpenStack, we include the Keystone, and uh, this demo here is going to show some features of, of Keystone. Um, it's our OpenStack, it's the identity service, provides authentication, authorization, and the audit uh, services. Uh, use it to you know, get your token. Uh, 
Uh, and then you pass that token on to the other services. Uh, you define your service catalog there. Um, you know, this is, you know, all your other, you know, Nova is running here and uh, Swift is running over here. Uh, that's what the service cad catalog tells you. Um, you also define, you know, your users in there. You define the uh, the groups. Um, domains are a way to group uh, the users and the projects. And um, that's uh, pretty much that side. And uh, so I'll just cover this. Uh, this is how the classic um, authentication works. And then you'll be able to compare this to how does this compare to the federation flow. Um, so in this one, you can see the first step there is this uh, little blue guy with no face. He uh, sends his password to Keystone. And uh, Keystone can talk to the, the back end uh, database that can either be like an SQL database or it can also be uh, LDAP, it can be your corporate LDAP. Uh, from there, you get your, the guy gets his token back and then he passes it on to, to Swift and Nova. And uh, you know, it's not too, too complicated when all you're doing is getting a token. Uh, so you, then you pass that on to, to uh, Swift and Nova. And now I'll hand it over to Steve for the Federation stuff. All right. Um, oh, okay, great. This thing works. Um, so how many people are at the keynote today? Did you all see that with the uh, federated uh, identity stuff from Digital Film Tree and HP? That was pretty awesome, huh? Um, so yeah, federation's getting to, it, it was already a hot topic. And if anything, now it's, it's still pretty hot. So uh, federation, you know, you have two distinct entities that kind of want to work together. Uh, one of the main things of, of federation is federated identity. Um, and federated identity itself is actually broken up into two, um, two main categories, uh, I think of it anyway. Uh, identity providers and protocols. Identity providers is basically a way for a user to authenticate somewhere. Um, you know, typically we think of Google or Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, those are, Google especially would probably be a first class identity provider. We authenticate there, and they're pretty much done at that point. They send off your credentials somewhere else, and then that's how you can actually use the you know, one-click login or single sign-on, stuff like that. All these identities are stored somewhere, somewhere in like an LDAP, could be SQL, could be Active Directory, whatever kind of organized structure. Um, the identity provider is often a piece of software like IBM's Tivoli, um, where it kind of it doesn't really matter what the underlying technology is or what protocol you're using. Uh, it's going to have a way to translate those attributes that are stored, stored in a, you know, SQL or LDAP and put them into some set standard way. Um, this is where the protocol comes in. The protocol uh, not only sets the, sets the standard for how the user authenticates, but also how the user is represented using attributes and using fields. Um, so there's two main, um, two most popular um, protocols that Keystone supports is SAML and OpenID Connect. Uh, for those of you who don't know, SAML is XML based. I think the first draft came out in like 2004 or earlier. Um, it's tried and true. A lot of enterprises use it. Um, it's been around a while. Lots of library support for it. Unfortunately, it is XML based, and you know anyone who's used OpenSAC knows that it's in Python. And anyone who uses Python knows XML support for Python. It's not the best, um, but then in comes OpenID Connect to kind of save the day. Uh, they had their 1.0 spec in November 2014. It had been um, brewing up before that. It was based off of OAuth 2, which then and OpenID, and then came OpenID Connect. Uh, the great thing about this is it's actually JSON based which works out really well for Python, and thus OpenStack. Um, so I don't know how many people in the room are IBM, but what we're probably used to associating with federated identity is probably this login screen, which we see on our intranet. Um, you know, when you're booking travel or something, it's like, oh, well, got to sign in. So here's a, you know, stevemar at ca.ibm.com. This is but just one instance of federated identity. It's a very specific one. It's a browser-based single sign-on. Um, but bringing it back to the concepts that we introduced in the slide before, um, the identity provider in this case is Blue Pages, which is our corporate LDAP. 
and the protocol that it's, being, uh, that it's talking with is SAML 2.0. Uh, like I said, single sign-on is just one sort of way to use federation and federated identity. Uh, the other, so speaking on a broader sense on this, uh, on this slide, there's two main reasons why you want to use federated identity. Uh, you're federating in or you're federating out. Um, federating in would be you have an existing service provider. You have an, a an application, let's say, like, you know, uh, to put in IBM terms, you want to book your travel. So we log in and we see our single sign on. And then our, our identity provider would be um, Tivoli or whatever it, it uses to actually talk to the Blue Pages backend. So in that case, your web app is just basically a service provider for the user, and it's using an identity provider, um, which it already knows about. And the main reason it wants to do this is because it doesn't want to handle authentication. It doesn't want to handle user management. It's especially when you already have a corporate LDAP doing that for you. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's something that we're noticing with a lot of Keystone and OpenStack kind of customers. They already have this in place, so they don't, you know, they want to leverage this. Uh, federating out is kind of the flip side of that. It's kind of turning it inside out. And I'm going to credit Joe Savick for this one here, and he's sitting in the corner over there. Uh, federating out. Um, it's basically making your, uh, your application um, kind of represent a user in a standard way, so in a SAML way or in a JSON way. Um, the reason why we're going to go into this is because that's kind of like what the keystone to keystone, or if you saw on the keynote, that's how they're able to actually um, you know, get two distinct organizations to kind of trust each other by, by creating a user in a standard way. But before we go into the stuff, into the Keystone to Keystone stuff, I wanted to briefly talk about the Web SSO feature. Web SSO is actually um, one of the new features that we introduced in Kilo. Um, I'm not, I think it's classified as experimental right now, but it's pretty solid. Uh, credit goes out to the guys from CERN who actually um, did a POC of this stuff earlier in, uh, I think, Juno. Um, the reason why this is important is because, um, you know, Horizon is, Horizon, the OpenStack dashboard, is the main uh, kind of kind of landing, um, not landing page, it's the main point of contact for usability for users. They're, most of the time, users are going to be going through Horizon to do most things. CLIs are great for automation, but most users are actually going to go through Horizon. Um, and so now what we were introducing in Kilo is that users can now sign in to, through Horizon by going to their identity provider and then signing in from there. Um, we have a demo of this. We're going to show in about a slide or, so, slide or two. But one of the technical points of this was that um, uh, the users themselves aren't actually going to be existing on Keystone. This is a basic concept for federation. Um, so you know, users from an existing identity provider are not going to be, you know, you're not going to find them in the Keystone SQL backend. It, Keystone should have no knowledge of this. It says, great, your user's authenticated. OK, let's see what permissions they have, and go, go at it from there. And one of the other aspects of this that was important was branding. Uh, it seems kind of awkward to kind of type in your IBM username or your you know, Google password into a Horizon login. I know you can change the branding and all, but uh, it just kind of seems a little awkward. Um, so to give you a quick kind of picture of what you'll see there, um, and we'll show the demo in one second, the, when a user actually is going to hit Horizon, um, they're actually going to be given an option as to how do you, you want to connect. Do you want to use your, your old password, username and password, kind of like how you use your service accounts now? Or uh, do you want to go through a federated flow? And with the federated flow, what we're doing is we're listing the protocols. And each protocol is going to have a default identity provider associated with it. And once the user actually clicks that, um, they're actually going to go to the, uh, to, the sync, to the branded kind of login page that's associated with the identity provider, log in, and then actually go back to, and then they'll actually already be in Horizon at that point. So in the demo, you're going to see, uh, to you know, kind of bring things back to the terms that we're already familiar with, Google would be the identity provider. OpenID Connect would be the protocol. And like I said, Horizon can list quite a few protocols. Um, yeah. So to actually quickly show the demo, I tried to, whoop, there it is. 
tried to cap it at two minutes because I don't want to bore you guys. Uh, but what's going to happen is, there we go. So the user is going to actually hit Horizon. And you're going to see over here, um, it's the usual login page. This, one, this is all actually uh, customizable. So by default, we decide to go with OpenID Connect. But it's actually customizable. You can actually see the Keystone credentials is listed there. And you can go back to typing your username and password. Pretty handy for service accounts. Um, but then if you don't want to do that, you can go through the OpenID Connect flow. Click Connect, and you'll actually be prompted to hopefully go to the Google sign-in page. Boom. At which point, I made up a dummy account, uh, OpenStack Federation. Just kind of type it in, and you authenticate. And I already kind of I already configured Keystone to know uh, users from being, users coming in from Google are going to have are going to be put into this group with this role. And that's the, one of the basic concepts of federation is it's e utilizing groups because groups are still managed by uh, by Keystone. You can see on the top right that the user is actually coming from at accounts.google.com. That's the user ID that gets picked up. And the user, you can actually switch projects, or list projects anyway. I didn't actually bother switching. And just to kind of make sure that we're not playing around too much, uh, we can go see the images. And I think I end up creating a group or something. Um, but yeah, you can see it there. And this is all in Keystone right now. Like This is an untainted version. I just pulled down DevStack, ran a script, and kicked it off. You can see the script on my uh, GitHub or GIST. Um, but it's pretty much just straight up vanilla Kilo with a few changes. You just have to have the latest Django OpenStack auth library. Um, so yeah, you can see the user is doing stuff. He's got the admin role. And uh, I'm just going to sign out. And uh, that was the demo for the SSO pieces. And uh, now Brant is actually going to talk about the Keystone to Keystone Federation support in Kilo. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so in this uh, section, we have another uh, demo where we're going to talk about the Keystone to Keystone. So this was another thing that was demoed in the, uh, in the keynote this morning, uh, where they were doing Keystone to Keystone Federation. And uh, this is going to show some uh, further work that, uh, that we've got going on. And uh, it, it will actually be demoing some things that uh, haven't merged yet, uh, but are uh, proposed to the community. Uh, so the Keystone to Keystone Federation support uh, has been marked as uh, stable as of the Kilo release. So that means it's supported. Um, it's, it's an example of both uh, the federating in uh, and federating out. So you've got one keystone is acting as the identity provider. Uh, that's the, the source uh, uh, keystone uh, is providing a SAML assertion. And then there's another part that acts as uh, uh, actually a separate keystone that acts as the service provider. It accepts the SAML assertion from one keystone to the other and uh, it translates that into a, a separate uh, keystone token. Um, so in this case, we actually have two keystones, and there's several ways that you might set this up. Uh, you know, one of them might be a public cloud, one of them might be on-premise. Uh, they might, they could both be on-premise, um, or two separate companies. So uh, part of this is that the the two clouds, of course, have to trust each other. Um, you set that up by exchanging the SAML metadata. Um, and this is something you have to do in regular uh, federation too. But you know, you set up this uh, SAML metadata. You set up your uh, mappings of the the remote users to the local uh, groups and local authorities. So you have complete control over you know what authorities these remote users um, are going to get. And uh, we provide the tool. You know, you run this tool. It generates the SAML metadata. Uh, so it, it's uh, not difficult to set up. Uh, so the flow that you're going to see here is that the user authenticates with their own cloud. Uh, they send their username and password. They get a token back. Uh, and then they talk to their local uh, cloud, uh, their local keystone. Uh, they get back a SAML assertion. Using their token, they get back a SAML assertion. And now they forward that uh, SAML assertion off to the other cloud. And uh, using that, uh, they get their uh, token on the on the remote system. 
And uh, so this is a whole uh, diagram showing the flow, um, step one, as I said. So, you know, and in the demo here, we're going to see that there's a Minnesota region, a Minnesota cloud, and a, a Texas cloud. Those are just the names we picked for the demo. Um, and as you can see, there's a Keystone Nova Glance that's all running in one cloud, and there's another Keystone running in the other cloud. And the way that uh, you've tied those together is um, at the top there, there's the one-time setup where you uh, add the Minnesota cloud as a service provider on, on Texas. You add the Texas cloud as an identity provider um, on Minnesota. And then as, as a user, you know, let's say you start out in the Minnesota system here. Um, you ask for a SAML assertion, uh, you get one back, and then you present that to the other Keystone, and then uh, you get back a token that you can use with, of course, all the all the Texas um, systems. Uh, okay, so in this demo, uh, it, it's going to be showing Horizon again, so you can imagine an administrator or maybe a user here um, is using uh, Horizon, uh, checking out what's going on in the cloud. Um, you'll see that there's two regions, there's Minnesota and Texas, and it's, um, you know, it's really seamless here. I mean, you don't even tell that that you're going off to another cloud. And what's happening in, in the background is that it's actually storing uh, in, the, uh, in the horizon um, both of the tokens. So it's storing your Minnesota tokens and storing your Texas tokens. And it knows when you're talking to Texas that you use one token and when you're talking to the Minnesota systems, it uses uh, the first token. And um, uh, the other part here is, you know, it's set up the, the service catalog for the system so that it's got, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota system has got, uh, has got knowledge that there's this uh, other remote Texas uh, region out there. And uh, I think I've covered pretty much all that. Uh, so, uh, you know, as I said, um, some of these patches are still under review in the community, and it might wind up looking a little different, but uh, this shows uh, some things that are coming. Uh, so here's the demo. Um, this is just what it looks like when you go to the horizon on, on the Cloud Manager with OpenStack. Um, oops. Uh, so I just log in. Let's say it's the admin, and this is of course the um, the Minnesota region that he's logging into. So it takes a second. Um, and so for the purposes of this demo, you know, we're just going to look at so what are the flavors in this cloud. And uh, you can see in the in the upper right there, it shows the admin is is in the the Minnesota region here. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of flavors here. There's a lot. There's we've got the Cirrus image, of course, because this is a demo. Uh, and and now when I click on there, um, on here it'll show all the regions that I have available, and of course the Texas one. Uh, is a is a you know a whole nother cloud, and uh, when I click on that, this this is where that uh, handshake is happening automatically, where I'm getting a, another token on the Texas cloud, and then as you can see here, when we look at the images, there actually aren't any, whereas there used to, used to be that the Cirrus image, and uh, this one's only got uh, a couple of flavors defined, so this just shows that uh, you know it's it's connecting to a completely different cloud. And uh, you can log out after, or go back to the Minnesota region and, and see what's going on. Right. So that was our our demo for the Keystone to Keystone. So I was told I'm supposed to wrap up here. Um, so just uh, looking at availability. Uh, getting the code refreshed so the, the code from the community will be there and uh, uh, Cloud Manager with OpenStack in June. Uh, also with our 
our IBM Cloud OpenStack Services, which is our dedicated hosted offering. So you get private, dedicated, hosted cloud. Uh, you know, we've got a commitment there from that team uh, to, to have this up running in private cloud host on software third quarter of this year. Um, obviously, working with the community is something we're going to continue to do. All our friends are here. I see them all around. Um, and, you know, we'll look at the next steps for this. Obviously, getting more user feedback to make this more consumable uh, is going to be huge. Better install and config, whether it be Puppet, Chef, SaltStack, Ansible, what have you. Better client support. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to continue to make this more seamless, more consumable, more usable, and we need your all's feedback. Um, so, so, you know, please, we'd love to work with you. We want to help kick the tires, what have you. Uh, not just us, but, you know, everyone in the community of OpenStack that works on the Keystone team. And uh, we'd love to hear how we can improve things uh, to meet your needs. And uh, also, we are hiring tremendously. So look for somebody in this shirt. Uh, about wonderful opportunities for OpenStack contributors. Uh, well, that's convenient and coincidental. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, everybody needs to use a mic when they use a question because it is being recorded. So if um, we can put Jeff to work. Jeff, make sure that you get a mic for everybody. It's recorded, so I can. Uh, you know, no the excuses, question. Mike. Here, uh, Jeff here. Let's solve that for you, sir. Jeff will be our mic guy. We have the technology. Yeah, well done. Hi. Yes. Uh, I had a quick question about what happens can we, now that the federated identity is there and you can use, you can connect, you basically have one dashboard for multiple cloud instances. Um, are you guys taking it to the next point where I can now do um, move configurations and things that I've set up in one cloud from one point to the other and deploy it to the other cloud instead of having a separate outside uh, mm -hmm. force that needs to do that separately, like sharing images in some sense or copying it over or even like configuration for networking, configuration for other things? That, that's an outstanding question. Um, and the answer is you're, you're hitting on an important point. You know, this is sort of the first step. You saw it just as a demo at the keynote and a demo here. But the things that you're talking about with being able to, to get those configurations and network configurations and the things that you want um, is, is going to definitely be next steps and things that we have to look at and, and work with the community on how we make that easier. I know we've done a little bit of work. Uh, I know Henry Nash couldn't be here, but uh, you know Henry worked on adding dynamic configuration to Keystone so you, you could uh, be able to reconfigure Keystone without having to, you know, through a rest, RESTful API without having to shut it down. These are the basic building blocks that we're adding. And uh, you know, we're going to work with the other folks in the community to, to figure out the, the best way to handle those types of use cases that you're talking about. Do either of you want to add to that answer? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I already have a mic. Thanks. You do. <laughs> uh, no, but this kind of plays into the last slide where we were mentioning that um, you know, Puppet, Chef, uh, Ansible, SaltStack support, that's, you know, that's essential to kind of make it more real for folks. They want to make, they, they're already using this. But if the support's not th support for federation is not there, then you know no one's actually going to be using it. So we need support there. Um, and I know the guys from CERN have some really interesting use cases for federation. And I think that's what you're what you asked is kind of what's uh, what's up their alley. So um, yeah, I think someone's going to be proposed. Someone's going to be bugging us about that very soon. Yep. All right. Next question. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, great, great talk. Uh, I'm Jason Harley from Breakwater. Uh, this is a carry-on to the last question. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Hey, how's it um, going? It's going good. <laughs> Toronto connection. It's great. Uh, really? Yeah. The, the Toronto it's thing. It's OpenStack meetup. Hey, we're in yeah. Canada. We, really? we represent. We can't do wow. the handshake because you'd all learn it. And yeah. like, it's just ketchup chips cool. for everybody. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm wondering what the level of integration with this functionality is into other components at this point, which is sort of a carry-on. Like um, we talked about moving configuration, so heat sort of like trails in there nicely. Um, are these components understanding this kind, these kind of assertions coming from their local Keystone at this point? Or it, and if you don't know, that's cool too, obviously. It, it should be. It should be just like any other token, right? It, it's going to have a user. It's going to have roles. It's going to have a project. Um, the only thing is the user's not actually going to exist there, but the user ID and name are pretty much only there for auditing purposes anyway. Um, 
and you're assigning the user a role, and that's the token he's going to use. So it should kind of be, you know. Right, but but as you have your stuff on prem, maybe you have images or what have you, and you know then you have them in your glance, and there's things that you need to move up to your say dedicated hosted cloud, what yeah. have you. I, I think that's sort of what you're hitting a little bit. But there's there's going to be I think sort of those ancillary real world things. You say where you know here we come in and we think, well oh, look we did such a great job, and folks will come to us I'm sure and go, well you know in the real world we need to also handle A, B, and C guys, even us even us good friends in Toronto. So um, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of that. And we just need to start hammering through it and go, go to it. Oh, okay, let's go to the next one. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Thanks. Damien Stevens with Servocity. Uh, you mentioned that the, the clouds need to trust each other. So even if they're uh, OpenStack certified clouds, uh, I think you said the admin needs to do that. So when, I mean, what, what do you think it takes? And, What's the likelihood, or what's the next step to make sure that you can go from an IBM to a, a to a HP or some other um, certified OpenStack cloud, and then back and forth between that and my hybrid, just from a Keystone perspective? Because mm -hmm. it seems like you know you don't need to get the cloud admin involved for every uh, request at a public cloud scale. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be. It's not going to be every request, but you know the the other clouds that you trust. You know you're going to have to set up a relationship there between those two. It's really going to be the Keystone community's job to make that as easy as we can. I suspect now this is sort of out of band, out of channel. You do some configuration, pass uh, some keys. Yeah, to an extent, there are actually a few APIs that you can actually hit that that just, that just downloads the metadata for you. Uh, so you don't have to bug the admin from a service provider perspective, but he still might have to do some additional configuration to trust you, you know. Yeah, yeah. and, and my, my, my gut says we're going to need to make that better as a community. Yes. Uh, Kevin Fox, p and um, You've got her, some Horizon support for it now. Um, does Keystone itself have some kind of list the other clouds that are partners? Because uh, regions are kind of things that share a keystone, but um, can your CLIs and stuff switch between the clouds? It has, has any of that work been done? And uh, we'll take one last question after this. Yeah, and, and I think that's more work that we have to get done is, is you know, the CLI part uh, is a big part of it. Uh, yeah, just a quick note on that. We were just piggybacking off the uh, regions um, list. We just didn't want to have to make a whole new list on Horizon, so we just kind of slotted in there. Yeah. Hi. Um, hi, this is uh, Joy from HP. I just had one last question. Um, are there any plans for adding uh, auditing? A lot of, you know, it kind of falls into a lot of compliance uh, fulfillments for many enterprises. So I was curious if you had, you know, had plans to add special auditing with this feature. Okay, sure. And I see Matt Rakowski in the front laughing at me because he's part of the CADF uh, folk. Um, yeah, right now we actually have support for when a user authenticates through a federated workflow. So that's actually already there. It's been there since, I think, Juno. Um, and aside from that, what the user does on another cloud, it should be, again, seamless. It should The user ID should just be in the token. And if he's using a token to do an operation, you'll be able to see it. Um, and then I believe we, we should probably augment the existing uh, auditing to say, if it is a federated token, we should probably include the identity provider as well. So yeah, we probably improve it a little bit, yeah. So and again, that's another one with use. There's some basic stuff in there, I, you know, and we, we need to go further as, as you know, we work with folks like you and, and, and make sure we're hitting all the necessary compliance. Thank you. Okay.